Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this week on Tales of Tyria, we have a great big surprise for you. Stay tuned, but first, a good bit of news and a mailbag question from one of our listeners. This is going to be fantastic. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. It's coming. Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, one, welcome all to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria, number 45, the final episode before the game launches. I can't wait. Season 2 is about to come to an end because as soon as the game launches, we're going to go into Season 3 of Tales of Tyria. I am your host, Bridger. I'll be giving you all the moderating awesomeness that comes out of me today. And first, before we go any further, I really want to thank Peter, Matt, Marvin, Merrick, Nico, Bill, and Simon for donating last week. You guys have actually played a big part in making today's show possible. I went and bought some extra stuff that we're going to reveal later. It's fantastic. Fantastic. You're going to love it. All right. So huge thanks to those guys. They uh, helped with a bit of donations so that we could afford to get some awesome props for the show. So before we go on, you can find us at TalesOfTeria.com. Again, some people have been asking, how do I watch the live show? You always say watch the live show. It's Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, right here, TalesOfTeria.com slash live. So that's where you can find us also on YouTube and everywhere else. So with that, let me introduce the co-hosts here around the table. First up, we've got Great. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, Bridger. How you doing? Not bad, man. Not bad. It's filling in for Vega today. Everybody uh, heard last week he's on his honeymoon. So it's good to, good to see you. Glad you can make it. Yeah, I hope he's having a blast, though. Yeah, you're going to be filling in for uh, actually a couple of weeks here, it looks like. Uh, yeah, I believe for a little bit I'll be around. All right, thank you very much. Also joining us, we have Kai again. Welcome. Hey, guys. Good to be here. All right, very exciting. Freelancer also joining us here, so a lot of people just went, oh, damn it. I know. It sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, but I got Overseer Cat here. That makes uh, up for it. it. It's time for business now. It's got, what, five days away? Right? Yeah. It's sitting there. It looks like a Buddhist cat, like with its eyes closed, <laughs> meditating. He's trying to emulate the Mrs. Pandaria. Trailer, you know, like, oh, that's he, what's he's got it. the whole panda look going. Say it there, not. So. Say it not. Oh man, what happened to Great? He disappeared. He's just got a World of Warcraft poster. What the people, hell? People were upset about uh, the missing WoW poster, so I had to get it a nice spotlight over here. Traitor. Have you guys see, you've seen the Mr. Pandaria trailer? I watched that, and at the end of it, I was like, I gotta play this game until my rational mind set in and said, you've already played that game. You don't want to yeah. play it again. I asked my I wife if she saw the movie, and she said, yeah, that's Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. But they, they give it so much style, and, like, it looks really cool. I mean, the fact when he puts that hammer statue thing back on and then uses his little his yeah. staff to put it back into place, so much class in that trailer that you know the game isn't going to have. Ugh, oh, it's sad. You watch the trailer and you think, I wish it looked like this, and then it just doesn't, and it's cartoony and meh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so let's move into the show here because we are only just less than a week away. And to that extent, let me remind everybody that on launch night, Friday evening, remember Friday, well, Saturday morning, 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time is when it officially launches, but we have had information that it could launch earlier than that, much like the beta weekends have. So what we're going to do is probably from about midnight Eastern Time is at least I am going to be on here streaming on this channel, Tales of Tyria, just with a pre-launch show, just getting everybody pumping. It's going to be amazing. So if you're if you're sitting there waiting to play, jump on, and we're just going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. Guild Wars 2, comics, movies, it's going to be great. So come join us. Uh, it's going to be midnight Eastern Daylight Time, three hours before the official launch, because at any time during the launch party, somebody could text us and say, The game's up! Go, go, go! <laughs> it's going to be 
massive panic. All right. So be like Bridger took you long enough, man. I know, but that's, that's no. This is this is Bridger's my. Like I've been playing for five hours already. I'm like no, but this is this is my secret plan, right? If I've got three hundred people watching the show, at least one of them is going to be checking every second. I know it, and that way I'll keep it lying in the chat so that as soon as it happens, one of those three hundred people will let me know. Crowdsourcing will get me in the game before everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Where I've got such a large guild, that was my thinking behind it. Like, one of us will know it goes up. <laughs> exactly. There's somebody there <laughs> clicking, like, refresh every five seconds. Yeah. Or, like, log in. <laughs> yep. All right, so did you guys see this? Oh, he did say there's no sound period. That's what they're talking about. Whoa, sorry about that, guys. I think I hit a button. I hit a button that did something. All right. So anyway, um, that's that's a really cool thing. Definitely check that out. Um, and let's see. What else do we have on the, uh, on the news here today? Two new pieces of news. Very important. The first one is a confirmation that Guild Influence will be limited to the server that you are on. So we know that you can have guilds cross-server. So, for example, Guild XYZ is on uh, Crystal Desert and on Fort Aspenwood, right? And the guild members that are on Fort Aspenwood, when they earn influence, it doesn't go to the guild on Fort... A on, um, what did I say? It doesn't go to the guild on Crystal Desert. It stays on Fort Aspenwood. And vice versa, Crystal Desert influence stays on Crystal Desert. And presumably, officers that are on those servers can order upgrades separately, essentially, and the upgrades can only be spent on those servers. Now, that is very critical information. Cross-server guilds. That's going to be, uh, certainly put a damper, I guess, on, on cross-server guilds, yeah? Yeah, it sounds like if you put a lot of effort into the influence on one server, you're basically starting almost brand new on another server. I mean, that's that's what I'm getting from it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's totally and it kind of feels like you've got to have an officer on that other server. So say, for example, you know, any guild, they're mainly on one server. There's just a few people who couldn't get onto that server. They've essentially got to be promoted, one of them, to an officer so that they can get the upgrades. Otherwise, the influence they earn is just completely pointless. Yeah, it's, it's too bad. But it's, it's probably just a technical problem that they can't solve. I mean, there's, those I things know. are stored server by server. That's just how it is. I think it's a little bit intentional for like balance purposes because like then you could have a guild just inviting everyone around the world to get like maximum influence everywhere. It'd be pretty crazy and out of control. Because you can use some uh, influence upgrades in world versus world. So maybe that's yeah. what they're thinking. They don't want other, you know, servers. Oh, that's true. You know, okay, well, we have 400 people on this other server that's feeding our 100 guild members on, on our server, you know. So that, that could certainly be it. All right. Also, another bit of news that had to do with launch. Um, essentially, we are not going to see the guesting feature right away. That's something they're going to add after launch. I guess it wasn't ready, which is uh, disappointing, but that's good to hear. But sort of as compensation, uh, there are going to be free server transfers for an indefinite amount of time post-launch, essentially. Uh, they said, uh, what's the exact quote? World transfers will be, uh, at launch, players will be able to transfer between worlds freely. However, once per server populations have largely settled and stabilized, world transfers will be restricted to once a week and cost a variable amount of gems based on the population. And that's something we saw in the beta weekends. So, uh, so that sounds like a pretty decent system. I'm glad, I wasn't, I wasn't positive they were going to throw that free server transfer in there at launch. I think that's good because say, for example, you know, you've created a guild, you know, any guild and you get half of them there and the other half realize, oh, I can't 
get onto that server, you could essentially all suddenly decide that you're going to move to a smaller populated server and that would be free for you guys. So I think that's really good to get, you know, the servers and guilds settled down at the beginning. Certainly, yeah. It, it'll, make it, it'll make it way easier for a guild to say, we're going on server Y, but if that fills up, we're all going to transfer to server X that has yeah. low population and it's not going to cost us anything. Like it could have been a big cluster if servers fill up as a guild is halfway in there. So, definitely good to hear. So I guess there's not too much discussion. That's just, you know, that's just all out good stuff. And uh, that's, yeah. that's going down. That's the announcement uh, this week. Everyone's just excited for launch that they're kind of yes. like withholding all the good news. Yes. Oh, I wonder. Man. I wonder if players are going to be more inclined to, like, let's say they're on a server that's overfilled, right, Bridger? And mm -hmm. they're just tired of the, the queue times. Do you think they would, the, the ratio, because they mentioned a variable ratio on the gems versus the size of the server. That's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, I wonder where the limit for most people is to where they'll pay more gems to go on a, a well-performing, higher-populated server versus a, a very small amount of gems to go like to a lowly low-populated mm. server. Um, that's going to be interesting. I wonder if most people like if they're stuck in queue times and are just fed up with it, if they'll just go to these low-pop servers because it's really cheap. They don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, or yeah, I think if, it's, I think it was five hundred gems in the beta, right? Right. I mean, it still would be it would be great if they could give us some hard numbers. I mean, I, I really would. I understand they're tweaking it, but I'm still curious. I mean, what is the you know what is the cap? I mean, yeah. is it twelve thousand, eight thousand? I mean, what what would be your guess? What what do you think the great? What do you think the cap is for servers for at launch or what we've been experiencing over the beta weekends? For, for launch, like how many people do you think it takes to make a server say that it's a full server? See, that's a, that's a tough question because like you have the overflows constantly being made and stuff like that. So I don't, for max amount of characters, I think on, on a realm, on like one server, well, I would accounts, say maybe. Accounts, not characters, right? Accounts? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, accounts. I would want to say like maybe 10,000. That's what I'm kind of leaning towards. But, all right, you're, you're saying 10,000, but we, we have already confirmed, or various sources have confirmed, they've already at least got a million or a million, 1.1 million pre orders alone. Okay. And that was just a number from uh, a month ago. So if you divide that among how many, how many servers? I think 48 or 42 or something like that. Yeah, that, yeah it's, it's a if little you bit had more. 10,000 per server, I mean, that's right there, that's only 480. We've seen the server list for launch. I'm guessing that as those fill up, they're going to launch more servers. Because remember, that was one of the major downfalls of Warhammer Online is they launched with like 50 servers. And then there were just these massive empty servers where nobody was playing because people would join them and expect that the server was going to fill up. But oh, people only went to the three high pop servers and there was just people stranded on those low pop servers. So you don't want to be Warhammer Online in that case. You want to launch with less servers than you actually have capacity for and then launch new ones when you can. Yeah, we did exactly the same thing when I started playing. There was so many servers. Everyone was spread out everywhere, and then they started dying, and they, in the end, they had to introduce free server transfers so people kind of merged together, and then they killed off the smaller ones. I think it's better to start small, fill them up, and then release more. Yeah, so I'm guessing that. But, yeah, you're right, though. Even then, 48 for, you know, a million people that pre-ordered, which means they're probably going to be registering on Saturday, if not, you know, Friday night slash Saturday morning. Um it could be over 10,000. It could be more like 15,000. Who knows? Uh, there was that would a, be nice. There was an interview with a uh, NCSoft exec over in Forbes like earlier this week, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was saying something around they're preparing for hundreds of thousands of people to like literally get in the day it launches. And to me, that makes it sound like, yeah, they might have a million pre-orders, but they're probably not expecting maybe a million people to jump in the game like right away. Come on. 80% of people have to jump in the first day, right? I don't, I don't know. know. Like, if you pre-order it, you're not going to play the first day? Some people aren't as, like, excited about betas, like, not betas, like, launches. Like, I'm one of those people that have to be there the second it goes live. But some people are just like, I'll play it whenever. They're not really that, you know, level focused and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we're just speculating because we don't have the hard numbers. It would be nice yep. if we if we did. But yeah, it's it's uh, it makes it tough to guess exactly how many are going to be on a server. Um, so we'll see how that actually shakes out. 
We've got a mailbag question for this week. This is from Landshark X. He says, was curious if any of the Tales of Tyria or Team Legacy hosts had any experience with the weather machine in World vs. World. First of all, I appreciate a knowledgeable explanation. I don't even know how to activate it. Does it require all three Borderlands to, to be, you know, activated? Or do you just need some? Secondly, I'd be curious how effective it is at whatever it does. Far as I know, it can create offensive lightning storms and maybe healing rains. Uh, thanks, Landshark X. Uh, who wants to take this one? Anybody know a definitive answer? Uh, definitive, no. Uh, but I, I have a general idea of what it does. I mean, I can explain what it. You have basically four points. You have a center point, which controls the lightning strikes. Um, when you assault a given keep, basically these lightning strikes will randomly appear. Is it effective? Absolutely. I can't count how many times that I was attacking uh, a given keep or defending a keep, and all of a sudden this guy manning a ballista who just happened to be training his, his sights on me gets hit by lightning and gets stunned right as he's, you know, turning his, his view. So I've seen uh, the lightning kill people, which is hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it's very random and like against, it, it didn't seem like it did, you know, it wasn't like a tide turner, but it, you definitely notice it. Um, with uh, the little camps uh, that you swim around and you clear out all the crate, uh, I believe all they do, Bridger, is just kind of create reinforcements that attack nearby, you know, uh, places, right? Well, my understanding is, and I think this has kind of changed, because I think, like, in Beta Weekend of 1, it did basically nothing. Like, no, nobody ever seemed to notice any effects of it from Beta Weekend 1, but we kind of guessed based on what ArenaNet said what it was supposed to do. I talked to a lot of the TL guys and was told from them that, and this is something that I experienced as well, when you take the center camp, a bunch of quag and go out to attack things similar to eternal battlegrounds when you help the mercenaries as soon as you help the mercenaries they all send off a little patrol to go attack things for you like supply camps and such so the center always will send out a little quag and mercenary run to help and attack some towers that you don't control uh, or maybe defend ones that you do but those three underwater objectives, what I was told was that each of those corresponds to one of the three keeps on the map. The northern one uh, corresponds to the garrison, the, the western one corresponds to the bay keep, and the eastern one corresponds to that one on the hills. And that if you control that particular weather node, that will cause, you know, lightning and, and damage on the keep that it's associated with. And that makes sense to me intuitively, but I wasn't able to actually test it myself. So... I don't know, maybe the chat can help us out. If that's, like, uh, what they have heard as well, if they have tested it, if that's the accurate conclusion, I would be uh, happy to hear that. Yeah, I mean, as much as I was involved in World v. World, it always seemed like the camps were just sort of a waste of time to the point. And, and I'm not saying, like, they're a complete waste. If you have all the other points, great. But usually when you're taking a tower, and that leads to another tower, because it's like a giant clock, you know? This, these... Uh, these quaggin are in the center of an area that you generally don't have to run through um, unless you're going from keep to keep. So it's usually more efficient just to take the supply camp, go to tower and uh, ping pong. But, you know, I, I may be wrong. I, we might see like they've been majorly buffed and, and now the lightning practically kills people. I mean, it, uh, you know, we've seen arena net do it before. Like they've uh, changed the whole dynamic of NPCs to the point where they're viable. So maybe they are now. It'd be awesome if they were. Yep, excellent. So we'll definitely talk a lot more about mechanics and stuff when we've had more than, like, three weekends and a few stress tests to play. Like, when you play this game for a week straight, which I am definitely going to be doing, we'll have a lot better handle and grasp on everything that's going on, and we'll talk way more about the meat of the game as soon as we get into it. So that'll be next week. Uh, thank you very much, Landshark X, for that question in the mailbag. If you want to send us feed, uh, questions or feedback, it is feedback at talesoftyria.com is how you can get a hold of us. So if you have other questions or topics you think we should discuss on the show, go ahead and send it our way. We appreciate that for sure. Uh, now, we are going to move on to our special Guild Wars 2 Survival Guide. But it takes a little preparation, so I'm going to ask you guys to bear with us for about three minutes. We're going to, uh, potentially, you're going to have to reconnect to the stream. I'm just going to be fiddling with some stuff here, making sure everything works. And uh, we will be right back. So everybody stay tuned. This is going to be awesome. You're not going to want to miss it. I hope you guys appreciate it. Here it comes.
Welcome one and welcome all of the Guild Wars 2 Survival Guide. Guild Wars 2 Survival Guide is brought to you by Cool Cat Shampoo and Conditioner, Captain Wayden's Water Park, <laughs> and the whole Brett Keg Brawl. Now, here's your host, it's Bridger! Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to the first annual Guild Wars 2 Survival Guide. I'm your host, Bridger. What we are going to do today is have a little bit of a game show, our contestants right here. And what we're doing is presenting them with a problem that a new player might experience in Guild Wars 2 and tasking them to try and solve it for points. And as in Drew Carey's show, the points here don't matter. They're worth what? Internet karma? That doesn't mean anything. All right, let's introduce <laughs> our <laughs> contestants. Great. Sporting his amazing bandana. Welcome. Hey, I'm ready here to win some points in the karma and stuff. All right, points is what we will give you. Also, here we have Kai. Welcome. Hey, I'm ready to beat Freelancer down. All right, that's the plan. <laughs> that is the plan. Wow. Wow, so Kai. we'll see if that actually works. Also here we have Freelancer. As freelancer. <laughs> As freelancer. <laughs> Nothing special, just, just freelancer. All right. So, these questions have been completely randomized, and I am simply going to give you them in order that I have them. Now, this is the way the game is going to work. The first round, all the questions are worth one point, so you will get one point for each answer that you give, and there's only one answer that we're going to ask for. Uh, in the second round, you can earn up to three points, and in the third round, the lightning round, you can earn up to five points. But here is the kicker. If, for some reason, you cannot answer one or all of the questions, the points can potentially go to the next person. So we'll see how this works. All right? Great. You are up first. Are you ready? All right. I'm ready. All right. I am going to, uh, I'm going to give you 12 seconds on the clock. And then right. you've got 12 seconds to answer. So here is your first question for one point. Problem. You've been playing PvE, doing hearts and dynamic events, but you don't seem to have as much money as you should. What might you have overlooked? Checking my mail. Uh, judges? Yes! Congratulations, sir. That is correct. Great gets one point. That's right. With uh, a lot of... Character, a lot of new players may not know that you have to check your mail in order to get rewards from hearts. Heart, uh, dy what do they call them? Renown hearts. If you complete a renown heart, you will get a message that has some money in it. So check that and make sure you grab your money. All right. Now, I should point out, and I was going to save this for when we get to the three point questions because that's when it's really worthwhile, but all of the contestants have a special ask the chat lifeline. If you don't think you know the answer, you can say, I'm asking the chat, and we'll give the chat 20 seconds to see if they can come up with all the answers for you, and we'll give your score based on the chat. So chat room, don't let them down, guys, all right? So we're going to Kai's question one more time. So Kai, problem, I've got a stack of copper, and I want to take some of it and put it in my bank, and I want to send the rest to my guild. How do I split the stack? Your I thoughts? I want to ask the chat. <laughs> All right, ask in the chat. All right, ask in the chat. We're going to stop the timer. Chat room, how do we split a stack? We're going to see if we can get, if they, they can get it for you. Some of them are saying send to collection. Some of them are saying shift click. That's not the answer. Uh -oh. You never give it to freelancer. Some of them almost got it. They don't quite have it. They, they're getting pieces of it. All right, you got five more seconds. Four, three, two... Yeah. One. Come on, I'm not Come seeing on. it. I'm not seeing it. The answer that I have and what what I've been told. Oh, there it is in the last second. Alt, click, and drag is how you do it. Oh, you can't yeah. just click. You have to sh alt, click, and drag. That okay. will split the stack. It'll give you a little menu. So we'll give you that one. The chat room pulled through for you in the end. All right. Freelancer, your question is next. Here we go. <laughs> I have a problem. I want to send some money and items to my other character, but the game won't let me mail it. How do I get it to my other character? Use the bank. Well, that there's no tension in that. You just get the answer right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ruined it. You ruined all of it. Yeah, that was an easy question. But that is uh, the, the idea. A lot of new players might be confounded by the idea. And I'm sorry, Kai, yours was a little bit more difficult. <laughs> I apologize. It seems like 
like the general consensus didn't know, so I don't feel that stupid. Well, we gave you the point for it, so you got it, you got it. Yeah. So uh, that that is the way that you get from one character to another. If you want to send gold or you want to uh, you want to send items, you put it in your bank, and the bank can actually be accessed by all of their characters. It's a count bank, not a single character bank. So it's not like other games you may have played. All right, so the score is tied up one to one to one. Let's find out what happens next. Going into round two of round one. All right. Great. Problem, I rolled a human and my friend rolled a Norn. How can he join me in the human areas? Well, he's gonna have to go to the Azuran portal in his respective city to get to you. That's it, that's right. If you go to the Asura Gates in the capital cities, you can meet at Lion's Arch. Now, uh, for a bonus point, does anybody know of another way that might be easier to explain to people? Kai! You, you, you could press H and go to the mists and then go through the Lion's Arch portal and then go to the city. Judges? Maybe. I'm sorry. The judges were turned down. But yes, yes, we'll give you we'll give you one more point just because there's two two different ways to answer that wait, question. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Uh, she had a hard question, way. freelancer. That, I'm that trying is to hard. You have to go through the tutorial and everything. That's a, no, that's obnoxious. You can just go to World v. World and go straight <laughs> to the Lions Art Court. And... <laughs> Alright, I'll give Freelancer that's... a point too. Alright. Kai, your question next. Here we go. Ready. Sorry, I don't know why everybody was upset about the next question. Here we go. <laughs> Problem, I keep seeing bonus XP whenever I kill a mob. What does that mean? That means that that particular mob hasn't actually been killed in a while and it's to encourage you to explore areas that you might not normally come across. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the time did run out, but you got it. The bonus XP that you see when you kill mobs is actually a reward for exploration and finding areas and fighting mobs that haven't been fought in a long time. So that is a really cool feature. Other people have also reported that if you kill mobs a lot in a row, like 20 to 30, like back to back to back to back, that that will also do the same thing. All right, Freelancer, your turn. Here's the next question, the next problem. I have just gotten new skill points and I can't, I can't, I can unlock a new skill, but I want to try them out first. What's one way I can do that? What do you mean? Explain it to me. Explain like I'm five. You go to the miss. How do I get you there? You go it, you select your skills and you go into a random match and get on. I don't know, chat room. I don't <laughs> think that's gonna help any new players. Let's let the chat room decide. They can they can decide. Did Freelancer get the point chat room? Let's see what they say. The, I would have said uh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> They're saying no. I'm looking for an answer that'll help a new player. And I know you're going with that, but because what 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 I would have said is press H, go to the PVP tab, and choose B in the mists. And what that will do is uh, essentially get you to a practice area where you have all level, all skills, all level 80 stuff, and uh, it really allows you to test things out. So that's a really useful concept. And um, uh, let's see, uh, maybe we'll give you half credit. We'll give you a point five point, so that if you're tied up at the end, you that's a tiebreaker for you. <laughs> So, so you're telling me that, that learning your skills against a dummy is better than learning them against players? No, no, no. I'm saying I'm testing you, them. Is testing I'm them sure. is, is sure. better. Sure. All right. All right. We are now going to be heading into round number two. These questions are each worth three points. It's one point per answer, and they have at least three answers. So let's go right into it here. Great. Problem, your gear is getting old and you need better stats for some of your items. What are three options to get better stats for your items? Well, you can go to Karma Vendors and trade in some of that Karma to get some better gear. One point. You can go to Crafting and Two points. craft some better gear. And then you can go oh, to SPVP. Oh, I'm afraid your time is up. You did get two points. So, Kai, for the steal, What's the last thing, what's one more thing that he could do in order to get uh, better gear? Well, he could equip jewels into his gear to get better stuff. I'm looking for replacement gear, not to make the oh, gear okay. better specifically. He said crafting. Oh, no. One okay, more crafting, shot. He could 
run a dungeon and get gear from dungeon runs. From drops, yeah, you could get you could get dungeon du you could run dungeons. Uh, we were gonna also accept trading posts as the other way. You could just go to the trading post and buy gear from other players. So that was the that was the last way that I had on there. So that's one of the those are the different ways. World versus world karma vendors, by the way, have very good gear at decent karma prices. So if you have a bunch of karma and you need a specific piece of gear, you don't want to hunt, hunt hunt down a heart renowned heart. You can go to the world versus world area and hunt down a karma vendor there. All right, Kai. Your question, here we go. So Kai, problem, you're brand new to the game. What are three things in the Guild Wars 2 options you might customize to your personal preference? Could this be um, help tool tips? So when things might pop up to give you tips throughout the game, you could customize them to what they show. And auto loot. Auto loot will definitely give you auto loot. Um, and okay. we'll give you half credit. We'll give you the 0.5 for the other one. All right, Freelancer, uh, what are some other things in the options that you might customize to your personal preference? Uh, Keybinds. Keybinds, yep. Sound. Uh, configuration. Playlist. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. All right. Great. Can you think of anything else? We're going to try to give you the, the rest of these points here. Oh man, personal preference? Options oh, in that's... the uh, main option screen. Think main option screen. You can change... Oh man, I'm forgetting it right now. Uh, Alright, oh. so Kai gets a point, Freelancer gets a point. Um, I was thinking fast cast. You can turn on and off fast uh, cast so that you can yeah. instantly cast your, your area of effect spells. Also double tapping to dodge. You can decide whether or not you want to use that feature. Yeah, I was gonna say this chat room was scream and dodge. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're being good sports and not cheating. There you go. Uh, so yeah, so that's a bunch of different things that you can do. So definitely, when you get in the game, spend a bit of time, look around in the options. There are some cool things in there. Uh, specifically, those ones that we mentioned, I think, were some of the most important. All right. Now, freelancer, you're next. Uh, problem. All right. I have armor, weapons, and trinkets with upgrade slots. What do I put in these things? Uh, you can put gems, runes, or uh, jewels. All right, we got one more. Uh, sigils. There you go! <laughs> there we go, that's it. So Freelancer gets the three points there. And uh, so basically to give the rundown for people, gemstone pebbles and things that you get from mining and, and logging. Runes go in your armor, jewels go in your trinkets, and sigils go in your weapons. So that's basically how that uh, how that breaks down. You'll start seeing a lot more of those things when you get up into the 30s, those upgrade components. But uh, in the meantime, just yeah, ignore the upgrade slots for the low levels. You don't need to worry about that just yet. Alright, great. Back to you for right, three points. I seem to be falling behind in XP. What are three things I can do to correct this? Switch to view. Oh, man. Uh, do the heart quests in your area. Okay. Uh, do your personal story quests. Yep. And go to SPVP. Oh, not on the last one there. You do get two points. And uh, Kai, what else can you do to correct a problem if you're falling behind in XP. Which ones did he already say? I heard structured PvP and there was a buzz. He said uh, uh, dynamic events and he said personal story. He could get some boost from the cash shop to get some extra. Okay, we'll give you that one. We'll give you that one. Uh, and Freelancer, you've had some time to think. What else could you use? You can always get two to three levels from crafting. That's another one we were looking for. I've still got one other option here that nobody has said. Any ideas? Uh, doing achievements. Oh, that'll that, that'll do it. I'll give you I'll give you achievements. My other. Do you mean like one hundred percent ink zones? That's another one that I had on my list, but it's a little late now. <laughs> we can't give you that one, unfortunately. The That's last fine. one that I had was go to another starting zone, like in the early, not in the starting zone, but in the early areas. If you're if you've already done everything in uh, the the you know what you call it the Queensdale and you're still not ready to go in the next zone, go to another starting zone. That can obviously help as well. So uh, personal story, though, is I think the biggest thing. You get a lot of uh, XP from doing personal story. And gathering and crafting definitely are not insubstantial either. All right. Next up, Kai. Here's the next question. 
So, here's a problem. I have a friend in my party who wants to know where I am. I told him the waypoint I'm standing next to, but he can't find it. What are three different ways I could show him where I am? You could um, control click the waypoint in chat so that he could click on that and it would bring up the map and show you exactly what waypoint you're at. Anything else? Uh, uh, shift click the waypoint is I think what you're going for. But does control, po control uh, click work too? I think so. I know shift click might works on when you click shift click the waypoint. Might be shift click. One of, I know, I just kind of press all of them and click and see what We'll happens. give you half <laughs> point credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's one freelancer, one. freelancer, what are some other things you could do to show help, help them find where you are? Uh, use a commander icon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that one's going to work. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I don't know. I mean, use map chat. All right, great. Do you have any other way to indicate to your friend where you are? <sighs> um, so we did commander uh, commander icon. Waypoints we did. Uh, go to SPVP. Eh, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for them to join you. All right, the other options I had was you can draw on the map, guys. Invite them into your party, and you can draw on the map with uh, alt plus, I'm sorry, shift plus click and drag lets you draw on the map. You can put a little line and say, follow this to where I am. Or you can uh, just, you know, shift and click to ping the map. Or you can uh, alt plus left mouse, mouse button sends a personal waypoint. And that allows them to see. All your party members can see what you're drawing on the map. All party members can see your personal waypoint if you alt and then left click. Uh, so those are all the different ways that we were thinking for that particular question. Um, all right. So the last one goes to Freelancer. Uh, here's the question. I want to craft, but I don't know where to get to the various items. What are three of the ways you can acquire crafting materials? Uh, you can get them from rewards, from achievements. You can gather them yourself or you can buy them from training posts. Those are three ways, absolutely. All right, so I had another one on here, and let's see if Great can figure out what it was. Great, what else can, what is another way to get crafting materials besides gathering them from nodes, trading posts, or uh, what was the other one Freelancer said? I don't know. I think he said something but uh karma vendors Ooh, karma vendors i'll give you that one yeah yeah definitely karma vendors and kai i've got one more on here aside from gathering nodes aside from karma vendors aside from the trading post there's another uh there's another type of gathering material that we haven't covered how do you acquire it um from drops from mobs that's in it bags. drops is what we were looking for killing mobs We'll give you one point for that. All right, so what we're going to do is total up the score here for you guys. Should be noted the chat saying salvage. That's salvage another is another way. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of roll that into killing mobs. I meant more of where you get it from, the place, the, the origin. But yeah, we, we could go with salvage. Yeah, we'll throw that in there for the new players. Um, now, what we're going to do here is total up the score. Freelancer has 10.5. All right, 10.5 for Freelancer. Um, and Kai has, calm down, calm down, eight, <laughs> and Great is sitting pretty on seven. All right, so. Oh, it's close. It's pretty close. So what we're going to do now is go into the lightning round. But first, we have a few sponsors that we have to plug here. So stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Maverick. You know a lot of people ask me how I keep my mane so shiny and soft while I'm out with the warband. The answer is Cool Cat Shampoo and Conditioner. I just can't stand to have my fur matted with blood and entrails. So after a hard day of killing, I use Cool Cat Shampoo and Conditioner before I go out on the town. Are you looking for a right good time? Come on down to Captain Wayans Water Park. You won't find nothing funner than our labyrinth of death. Or you can swim with Chompy, me pet shark. And don't forget, dead man's drop. It'd be our trust building exercise. Guaranteed to improve workplace morale. Or at least kill ye. You'll come for me treasure, but stay for eternity. <laughs> Captain Wayne's Water Park, not responsible for any loss or damage items due to death or maiming. Death guarantee only applicable to mortal beings. Treasure only available while supplies last. See Shane for details. 
looking for a little rest and relaxation? A little time away from battling dragon spawn and undead? Hi, I'm Olaf Dungenson, owner of Keg Brawl Rink in Holbrek. Now, I know what you're thinking. Olaf, how can running around on the ice possibly be restful? Well, of course it can't. But recovering from the multiple beatings and broken bones you'll receive while playing certainly is restful. The city of Holbrek would like to remind you to please drink responsibly. All right, we are back. Please drink responsibly, the city of Holbeck. We'd like to remind you guys, and, and we look, please spay and neuter your char. I mean, your cats and animals. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some good sponsors, man. <laughs> yeah, we're very glad to have them. <laughs> I love that water park, though. That's the, I had a blast there in Lion's Arch last time. Oh, yeah, Shane's a good guy. Shane's a good guy. We yep, love Shane. He, he's the one that contacted us, actually. Uh, all right, so. We've got the lightning round here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to ask you guys a series of questions. I've got, let me see here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's three questions apiece. So, are you ready? My body is ready. But is your mind ready? I want to hear it. Are you ready? Yeah. That's right. All right. Great. Being the person in last, you are up first. Now. I gotta keep a separate tally here. This is gonna be interesting. All right, are you ready? You're 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 gonna get lightning mode here. Means uh, we're gonna go from question to question to question, just like that. So here we go. <clears throat> All right. The first problem: your pack is full. What are five different ways you can fix that? Uh, use the deposit collectibles. Bag. Okay. Go to a vendor and sell some junk. Salvage some stuff. Um, put some stuff on the auction house, trading post, yep. and then go structure PvP and put some of that stuff there. Alright, you got four points from that one. Moving on to the next question. Name five item types that weaponsmiths can make, excluding sigils. Five different weapon types. Um, they can make swords, great swords, yep. uh, axes and maces. Yep. And then uh, hammers. Yeah, that is correct. Right there at the end. Got the hammers. Very good. Very yeah. good. <laughs> and finally, here's the last question. What are the four daily achievement categories? And for the final point, describe the quantity needed to max out one of them. Ready? Go. Uh, I know harvesting is one and 15 yep. for that one. So I'll get that one out of the way. All right. Uh, daily kills. Yep. Uh, daily variety kill, I think. Is yep. another one. And then there's one more. Oh. Uh, I can't remember. That's PvP. Let's do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> SPVP is the answer to everything, huh? Yeah. So that was go good. Answer. You have, you, you just got, let's see, 12 points. So that puts you up to uh, a total of 12 plus 7, 19. Yeah. 19 for great, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Get that out of there. We're going to see if we can't fix this so we get some better audio on our, on, our, on our back track here. Get it a little quieter so we can get everything sounding correct. We're going we're gonna to lower that down. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So we're now ready for the next section. Kai, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Go then. All right, here's the problem. You want to take a screenshot, an amazing view. What are some of the things you can do to improve the quality of your screenshot? You can control shift H to hide your UI. Yep. And you can also set a key binding to do a HD quality screenshot. That's well. correct. Anything else? All right, out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Out of time for that one. We'll come back to it. Here's the next one. Excluding junk and common items. Name the quality levels and their associated colors from lowest to highest. Ready? Here we go. Uh, rare is uh, blue. Unique is green. Uh, exotic is orange. And legendary is uh, red. Or like All right. We'll give yellow. you the legendary one. So what we were looking for is blue is fine, masterwork is green, rare is yellow, 
Exotic is orange and legendary is red. And for the last question, name the four. Name. Oh, that's a little difficult. Let's let's give you got you got the short end of the stick on everything. Here we go. Let's let's do this one. What are the five? What are five of the different chat commands, and who do they talk to? Um. Okay, M slash M talks to Map slash P speaks the party slash G is Guild slash T is Tell and chat L. Logo. Almost had all of them. Okay. You got four points for that one. Uh, let's see. We had uh, slash Say or slash Local is what the one we were looking for. That's a local area. Slash map, slash team, slash guild, slash party, slash W, slash T. You got that one in slash squad. Those were all the ones that we had. So, there you go. You just picked up a good solid nine points. And that actually brings you right up to uh, nine plus eight is indeed 17. So, just a couple short of great. But freelancer still sitting pretty on ten and a half. Great. Uh, a freelancer... Can you beat Great? He's sitting there at 19. You need more than nine points. Can your nine or more points? Can you do it? Uh, I think so. I, I got Great here. I got Great. This, oh. this is. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's on. It's Let's on. do it. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me make sure I get the right ones. Oh God, I gave him the world versus world question. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Problem. You join world versus world, but you don't currently have a group to roll with. What are some things you might do? Uh, look for orange cross swords, join a party, follow a commander icon, uh, ask in team chat where all the action is, ask your guild where all the action is, ask your alliance where all the action is. Aside from Go those, on team speak. Ask. <laughs> all right, we were looking for jumping puzzles or work on map completion and skill points were in there, but you got three of them definitely for what we were looking for. All right, next up, name five item types that the huntsman can make, excluding sigils. Oh, wow. Um, uh, bows, uh, short bows, long bows, uh, axes. Not axes. No, not axes, no. I've never played a huntsman. Uh, I'll pass on that one. All right, we were looking for never rifle, really pistol, harpoon, warhorn, and torch were the other options on that one. All right, and for the final point... Name the four specialty bags, the special bags that can be crafted and have sorting options. And for the final point, name the only type of specialty bag that is craftable by all three crafting disciplines. Uh, you have an invisible bag. Yep. You have... Uh... Shoot, you got me on this one, Bridger. Um... Well, we're going to go let, let them have it. All right, invisible... Oily. Oily is just for junk. <laughs> Oily bags are just stored junk. Equipment bags will store, prefer to store gear first. And craftsman bags will store crafting materials. And invisible bags are actually the only type that can be, can be created by all uh, different the armor crafting professions. Each of them can make normal bags and invisible bags. And then each of them also makes one of those other categories. The oily, the equipment, and the crafting. I think leatherworking makes oily, tailoring makes the, craft, uh, the craftsman bag, and the armorsmith makes equipment bags. So, let's see what the scores are. Freelancer... I don't have a drum roll, but let's get let's get uh, let's get the cr the crowd <laughs> rolled up here. <laughs> Freelancer had ten point five points. He needed nine. He had six. Aww. I'm sorry, Freelancer. The game goes to great. Great, congratulations. Aww. Yeah. But with uh, sixteen. And a half points, Freelancer came in very close third place next to Caillou at 17. Oh, man. Freelancer, that last question was definitely out of your league. I'm sorry. It's all right. I mean, I don't use those special bags, but that's – it is what it is. I'll definitely I'll, – you know what, Bridger? One week into the game, I'll certainly pull that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I hope that everybody had a good time and, uh, and, and it gave us an excuse to get dressed up here on the show. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, absolutely. So I'm wearing my cat right now, so. 
<laughs> You're wearing your cat. There you that go. That counts. That does count. So uh, now, there are any other tips that you guys have for new players getting in the game? What are some other things that they should probably know about? Anything that we didn't cover? Well, that deposit collectibles just... button is really useful, yeah? Yeah, like, just read the tooltips as well. Like, the way that Guild Wars 2 have done it is they've really made them pop up when it's actually relevant to you. So that when you open your inventory, it says things about the inventory. When you kill something, it tells you, you know, maybe there's some loot that you can pick up. So I think, yeah, just pay attention to the tooltips. They're concise and they're clear and they're really easy to read. So. Yeah. One thing that I thought was really cool, you type in slash wiki and then a subject name, it'll, cl it'll uh, minimize the game and open a browser and do a search on the wiki and bring you right to the answer that you're looking for most of the time. So slash wiki and then the subject, if you're in the game, just type that in the chat. It'll bring you probably straight to the answer on the, on the Guild Wars 2 wiki. Uh, let's see. I did not know that. If you don't have fast casting turn on and you double tap a skill, like if four is, uh, let's say five for Meteor Strike, right, for, for, uh, for Elementalist. If I hover my mouse where I want it to go and I just double tap it, it'll just cast it instantly. I, I don't have to worry about waiting for, to click with the mouse or anything like that. That's kind of nice. Um, nice little tip I'd like to give, you know, to the newer players. Um, you know, if you haven't already bound your skills to ZX, C, B, you know, E and F, you know, do that with your, uh, your six through nine or six through eight. Um, that's always a nice little tip. It prevents people from having to reach across the keyboard. Definitely, definitely. I put some of that on my mouse as well, but ZX, C, V are very useful to have. I actually rebound my inventory to V just because I wound up opening the damn thing so much I didn't want to reach around across to I all the time. So that's one of the things that I did. Also, I changed A and D to instead be turn. I changed them just to strafe because that kind of helps a little bit uh, in my experience. Um, let's see. Chat room, any other uh, suggestions for new players? What else would you tell them? Let's see if they well, have somebody... A uh, Probably the best piece of advice in Guild Wars 2 is keep moving. Um, definitely mm. very important yep. to anybody yeah. listening to this, getting excited for launch. Uh, you know, if you're that guy that stands still and attacks, uh, this is Guild Wars 2, man. You can just keep moving while you're attacking. That's, That's what's right. so awesome about it. You don't have it. to stand still. Most of the skills that you have will let you move while attacking. Very useful. Very useful. Uh, yeah, getting used to casting and running is definitely something that will be new to people. Yeah, don't stand in the fire. That's one of the things they say. <laughs> don't stand the in the green stuff. <laughs> yeah, learn to right. dodge. Don't don't uh, ever don't ever just wait on your crafting materials while you're running from quest to quest. You can be selling them on the auction house. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, sell them unless you're out. hoarding them for crafting. Or you something, can you can sell things and buy things on the auction the the trading post. I should say, uh, even right. though you're not at a vendor, you uh, you can't actually pick up any of the things that you bought or pick up your money until you actually go back to the trading post guy, but you can actually sell things just from your inventory. Right click on it, sell on trading post. That's kind of useful. That's right. really cool. Uh, red circles are bad. A lot. The, everybody yeah. in the chat wants me to say that. Um, <laughs> well, that feels like don't, don't take supply from stone mist. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Sorry, I had to say that. That's a good one. <laughs> most importantly, <laughs> for the love of the gods. That? Take supply um, from Stonemist if you're, if you're going to sell on the trading post, don't just sell it instantly and don't just buy instantly either. Make a buy or a sell order. Make a buy order because and just like match the lowest price. If you're just going to not think about it, just match the lowest price and with your buy and sell orders. But don't just buy and sell instantly. That's going to that's gonna get you to lose a lot more money than you have to. Um, and somebody you, else said one in here. You need to borrow gold. Just whisper freelancer. <laughs> oh, no. That's bad. Um, oh, yeah. No, if, don't do that. <laughs> if you're, it, it, you should stick around after you complete a dynamic event just to watch what unfolds because oftentimes you'll see something really cool and another dynamic event will start that's a continuation of the first one. Um, it's, it's one of those things when I started playing, I just blew it off because so much of the time these kinds of things are not worth paying attention to, I sort of just get completely disengaged because I don't want to be disappointed. But just stick in there. Be engaged. Get into it because you, you won't be disappointed. That's a, that's a, that's a very important thing. Be immersed. Thing. Explore. Explore. There's so many cool hidden things that the game doesn't point you to. Everybody's going to go around and get the vistas. They're going to get the points of interest. But there are things out there and events that you can trigger that aren't on the main map. You have to find them. And they're, it's really cool when you come across one of those things and it's just you have found it and nobody else is going there because it doesn't have a special icon. It says, Mega Man, Mega Man, over here's a jumping puzzle. <laughs> so. 
I think an important thing also with all of us getting super excited for launch and likely staying up way past our bedtimes, uh, drink plenty of water. <laughs> I mean, you know, and at least try to get some decent sleep, but uh, don't forget to eat, um, you know, even if it's protein bars or what have you. I mean, just always have a cup of water. I mean, make it a habit. And you will feel so much better when all of a sudden you have to do that raid three o'clock in the morning if you've been drinking water the whole night. So. Raid? A raid? <laughs> uh -oh. also, you know I mean. don't, <laughs> don't forget to feed overseer cat either don't forget to feed your pets because that that might happen this week there might be a lot of pets going hungry except the guy's got the headphones on going damn it i told you to get behind me God, i have to have keep rezzing you <laughs> oh, can't hear you cat i'm on i'm on the team speak sorry so I don't know. <laughs> Your wow colors are showing. He's been calling them our raiding time whenever we go to do World vs. World. I have been trying to get him to change it to say siege. Siege oh, is a much go. better word. <laughs> it's not going to confuse people. Instead, he's like, nope, we've got raid nights. Why can't we have siege nights? I ask you. Hey, I, I'm a pathetic little soul that comes from hardcore progression wow guild, okay? It's just, it's ingrained There's in There's no me. changing Forgive forever me. and ever. <laughs> They beat you until you said, right, I run over here. Somebody in the chat room is not liking the bow ties are cool, damn it. All right? If the I doctor like can wear a bow tie, I can. Bow tie's classy. All right, before we... Uh, I like it. It's classy. It's cool. It's cool. All right. Um, before we go, I do want to give a shout out to the guild, The Older Gamers, T-O-G. The Older Gamers is a gaming community for people over the age of 25. Uh, they have 40,000 international members, with about 60% of them from Australia. Uh, I get the impression this is a multi-game guild, by the way, with 40,000 members. This year, we are celebrating our 10th anniversary. In 2006, we were honored by ArenaNet with Guild of the Week for our Guild Wars 1 division. TOG spirit of one of decency, fair play, and respect for all gamers. We have a very active Guild Wars 2 division focused on World vs. World, PvE, and ultimately having fun. The old... The, sorry, the older gamers.com. The older gamers.com. This is uh, from Pumpkin, or Laura, I guess. Let's take a look at the, the website here. Very snazzy, very slick. Looks good. Looks like the kind of website that a 40,000 player guild would have. <laughs> That's just a safe. Let's click on game divisions here. How many game divisions do they have? Looks like they have Xbox, PC, FPS. Look at they've got They've got still like a Battlefield 1942 division. Holy crap. They must be one of the only ones. But that was such a good game. Blops! You've got blops? That's it. I'm not doing it, it anymore. <laughs> Don't go to that thing. Out. It's terrible. I'm just kidding. Day of Defeat Source. Okay, that makes up for it. And Red Orchestra 2. Okay, okay. World of Tanks. Pay to win. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stop <laughs> criticizing your choices of games. <laughs> but yeah, no. They're, they're, it's a really cool. They sent me a good email. So uh, definitely check them out. Very cool. They just started a Guild Wars 2 division or maybe have had it for a while. But anyways, they said it's, 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 uh, it's working well. So thank you, Laura, for submitting that. I'm sorry I, I made fun of you. <laughs> if you have a guild that you would like to submit so we can make fun of it, <laughs> you can send it to feedback at talesoftyria.com. What a ringing endorsement of our system, huh? Oh, all right. Um, Raijin Dwell, why did I want you to watch it live? It's because you help with Kai, you get points. That's why. What do you mean, why do we want to watch it live? It was, they didn't want to use their, their lifelines. Maybe Freelancer would have won if he asked you guys for the crafting answers. He didn't use his lifeline. I can't help that. I had hey, you guys the, here. The chat room scrolled or uh, trolled the heck out of me when I asked, uh, or when you asked if I got that point or not. I oh, mean, yeah, they at did. That they point, said, I'm no. like, I'm all alone here. <laughs> <laughs> Chapman would be like, oh, crafting bags? What other kind of bags are there? I think there's one that holds cats. Yes, you should say cats as your answer. Cat I think there's a cat. Answers bag. came from the cat. You just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> He's been whispering everything. Whisper, yeah. Secret, <laughs> secret overseer cat with his mind powers. All right, so uh, I think that about does it. Ladies and gentlemen, for this episode, we are going to be, uh, again, live streaming Friday night, midnight, Eastern Daylight Timing is about the time we're going to start. Definitely check it out right here, talesofteria.com. Hi, I'm Maverick. You know a lot of people ask me how I keep my mane so shiny and soft while I'm out with the warband. The answer is Cool Cat Shampoo and Conditioner. 
I just can't stand to have my fur matted with blood and entrails. So after a hard day of killing, I use Cool Cat shampoo and conditioner before I go out into town. You looking for a right good time? Come on down to Captain Wayans Water Park. You won't find nothing funner than our labyrinth of death. Or you can swim with Chumpy, me pet shark. And don't forget Dead Man's Drop. It be our trust building exercise. Guaranteed to improve workplace morale. Or at least kill ye. You'll come for me treasure, but stay for eternity. <laughs> Captain Wayne's Water Park, not responsible for any loss or damage items due to death or maiming. Death guarantee only applicable to mortal beings. Treasure only available while supplies last. See Shane for details. Looking for a little rest and relaxation? A little time away from battling dragon spawn and undead? Hi, I'm Olaf Dungenson, owner of Keg Brawl Rink in Holbrek. Now, I know what you're thinking. Olaf, how can running around on the ice possibly be restful? Well, of course it can't. But recovering from the multiple beatings and broken bones you'll receive while playing certainly is restful. The city of Holbrook would like to remind you to please drink responsibly. All right, now for the ridiculous mess of post-production for that train wreck. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's a quite a bit of editing there, Bruder. Yeah, yeah. That was be so funny. funny. That was so funny. <laughs> I love that was those commercials. Amazing. That was just this morning. I just woke up and it's like, I don't know if I was dreaming, but I just started having these ideas. <laughs> I was like, that will work. I could do that. Were you on drugs again? No. My coat just broke. Like, just now, as we ended. Just the button popped off. Oh, that's nice. a bummer. Didn't, it was jealous Aww. of the tie. I had to turn my air conditioning up because I got this jacket under the hot lights and, ah. <laughs> Whew. You have air conditioning in your house? Yeah, I've got central air. What do you mean? What? You, said, you got air conditioning in our house? We don't have air conditioning in the house. That's only for other places. What do you mean? Air, of course we have air conditioning in the house. You don't have air conditioning in what? houses? No. Well, you never get hot enough for air conditioning over there. <laughs> English people are hot, damn you. <laughs> oh, man. No, we they have an air conditioning pipes. unit outside that pumps air inside into a system that goes to every room. No, that is mental. We have that in office buildings, but not in houses. No, we have that. It's in a condo. It's good times. I have it. I live in, like, a townhouse or something. I mean, if we didn't have this, we'd have one in the window. What? That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's not ridiculous? Getting a good night's sleep because I'm not ridiculously sweaty. Yeah, that's right. I put that image <laughs> in your head. Now you can't get it out. Too late. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> oh, man. I can't freaking wait for this weekend. It's going to be awesome. It hasn't struck yet. I like, it hasn't dawned on me like, wait, yeah. this time next week I'll be playing Guild Wars 2 forever i still i got i've got a deadline now i gotta finish my crafting video i'm up to 13 minutes and i'm still not done i spent all weekend well all not today i spent all on this show but yesterday i spent all day on the crafting video until i got so burnt out i was singing to zero in the chat room for some reason on Teamspeak, and i was out of my mind so i was like <laughs> i gotta do something besides work creatively blown away yeah. so how, right, many days are, how many days are you gonna be off for I am off for the whole week after, and then uh, the Monday after that is Labor Day, so I have basically from the 25th through the 3rd, I have off. Okay. It's going to be a good time. I, that's, my, that's, my head, that's my head start, where I have to make a good show of it, because after that I have to go back to work, and people who don't have to work are going to just trounce me and get to 80, <laughs> and I'm going to be like, hey guys, so I just made it to 40 today, and people in the chat room were like, I was there two weeks ago, noob. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. I'll probably make it to 80 in the first week if I just stick on one character. I, I imagine it's not. I mean, it can't be that hard to hit 80, especially if you're off. Yeah, I mean, we hit 30 easy in one beta weekend, so I'm guessing we'll be able to hit. I'll be able to hit 80 on my main at least. Yeah, and for all those asking about the server announcement and all that, we're cleaning up the community site and all that. That will be sent out uh, uh, 
when it's when it's ready. I'm gonna say the Blizzard term Man. when it's ready. <laughs> Stole that one from them. All right. Yeah. So. I'm going to get started on this post-production, though. I'll probably yeah. put it up tomorrow. I can put those commercials up now. Somebody's asked, like, got to put that up. Oh, they were man. Cool, yeah. Those were fantastic. I, I need to go play there. some games. I know. What do you guys, do you want to play something? We could play some of that TF2, the new mode. We should do that. I heard about that, uh, Man vs. Machine. Yeah, it's like a, a sort of defense mode where you have the machines coming in in various waves and configurations and after and you got to collect the money from where you kill them and then you upgrade your stuff as you go and you got to go through i think six waves you got to survive and it, it plays quite differently from the regular game it's pretty cool it's pretty fun i tried it out just saying but i'll jump on team speak in a little bit we can play something cool. it'll be a good time anybody in the chat Hi. that wants to come play stuff on team speak with us hop on there there's 452 people i hope we don't break the server <laughs> oh, man. Just I probably shouldn't tell them where to look. If you know where to look, <laughs> you know what's up. All right, we're cutting the stream. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Remember, we're going to be there Friday night, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. At least I will be. And then Sunday night at 7, we're going to do a show, even then we're going to want to keep playing. <laughs> we'll do a show uh, for at least an hour. We'll do a, uh, you know, a what the hell, this is an awesome game show. You know, well, It'll be fun. So have a good night, everybody. See you guys later. Bye.